nah, it's just not working. I mean, there's just no feel behind it. No feels at all. <sighs> Let me go review some shit. <sighs> You know what? I think I might just go to sleep. Jeez, j j give me a second, will ya? I I'm not even in there yet. Oh, God, so bloody eager. Fuck. Right, now you can do it. Oh, so eager. <sighs> Oh, well, that's it, I guess. This is my mind, and uh, as you can see, there's just nobody home at the moment. No games I want to do, no nothing. Just, that's the end. Back to the docks for me, I guess. <sighs> games, yeah, humbug. Now just let me sleep already, yeah? Oh, Christ on a bike, Kimball. Stop being such a bloody faff ass. What the hell was that? I'm your ego, dude, and I'm here to jig you up a little. Because you're clearly in a very moody, very whiny place right now. And I, as your ego, your own personal fountain of positivity, can help you get through it. How can you be my ego? You're just me in a shitty wig. Oh yeah? Well, maybe my costume would be better if you got the wallet out every once oh, in a while. Look, what else, what else? Is all of this really necessary? Because, you know, I've kind of got this appointment with sheep jumping over a fence. So I'd kind of like to get to it, you know? Please? <sighs> look, this could be a hell of a lot more awkward, mate. I mean, you were scheduled to dream about me rolling around in a bath full of honey last night, but it's been put back a week. Uh, uh, um... No, you're not my type, sorry. Oh, well, tar very much. I mean, I didn't ask for this, you know. It's not like I'm doing this just to impress you or anything, but if that's the way you feel, then, well, I'll just go Alright, oh, alright, alright, god damn it, alright, just shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! Oh, god. Oh, look, I I'm, I'm sure I can put this to one side for a moment. I mean, oh, god, it's like comments have invaded my dreams. Uh, uh, why don't we, um, why don't we just make some small talk for a little while? You want to chat for a while with you. Um, yeah. Okay, what about? <sighs> well, maybe it'll work. I mean, well, you know, maybe maybe you could help me, because um, I'm having kind of a bit of trouble thinking up any ideas for the next video, so I don't know, maybe you've got some. Um, so, yeah, um, uh, me. Um, what's your favourite musical game? Well, being a very smart student who went to smart school and that, while also being a bit of a muso myself, I like things that are smart as well as funky. And back in 2001, on the Dreamcast, well, there was this one little game that just really, really... Heaven's sake, just say it already, we're losing subs as it is. <sighs> okay, okay. It's Wes. Wes! Excellent. There's a start. Whatever works, I guess. Wes first came out on the Dreamcast in 2001, but we're going to be playing the Xbox 360's HD version here. Because, you know, it looks nice. And I'm cheap. Simply put, the game's a whale shooter. And it's quite a sparse whale shooter. Not one of those insane Operation Wolf style doohickeys, but one where there's not all that much happening a lot of the time. That's the gameplay, pretty much. But of course, yeah, there's kind of a bit more going on here. Wes is all about rhythm and music and composition and synesthesia and all these other highfalutin big words. Once musical beat matching games got into their stride, around about the mid 90s once the 32 bit era kicked off, whole new avenues of creativity and mishmashery were opened up and Wes was going to explore them to their fullest. The game even takes inspiration from high places. Tetsuya Mizuguchi, Wes's creator, talked about synesthesia as the game's main inspiration, that being the condition where the stimulation of one sense creates automatic experiences in another sense, such as seeing colours while listening to music or when you smell something. Famous synesthetes apparently include Pharrell Williams, Nikola Tesla, Duke Ellington, and the Russian painter Vasily Kandinsky, who had it bad. 
Many of his paintings were inspired, if not created, by his own synesthesia, and Mizuguchi was directly inspired by his work when creating not just the concept, but the art style of Wes, wanting to create a game in almost the same way. Now it's unclear as to whether Mizuguchi actually has synesthesia himself, but the condition has inspired virtually his entire oeuvre, which also includes games like Space Channel 5, Luminous, and Child of Eden. He is, however, apparently a hardcore waver, whose life was changed by his first big gathering aged 13. And that's not really a surprise. That's a bit of the background for the game. As far as gameplay goes, Wes is kind of an odd one to pin down. It's simple enough when you break it down to the building blocks, and it's definitely a game that's defined more by its mood than by any displays of skill. But it still feels like virtually nothing else. Being simple is almost the point. At the start of a the level, there's nothing more than the very skeleton of an electronic track, and gradually you add more and more to it as you fly through the levels. You're not simply destroying enemies, it's more like you're destroying barriers. Barriers to creativity, perhaps. I don't think it's a coincidence that the majority of enemies in the game don't directly attack you. Playing a level in Wes does actually kind of feel like creating something other than a video game, like a piece of music or a painting. The shots are your brush strokes, and the controller provides the beat. Much gets made out of the game's use of vibration, and particularly out of the famous game-specific trance vibrator accessory, but it does work well to bring you even closer into the game, even if it's simply through an Xbox 360 controller. And then of course there's the actual art of the game itself. It comes from a wonderfully creative period where the art style of video games actually did feel as though it was on the cutting edge, because make no mistake, the visual style here is as low slung denim and as hip as you could get in 2001. You saw stuff like this everywhere. Hell, you know what it specifically reminds me of? The old idents for MTV2, the behemoth's Len New channel for young hipstery indie and alt people. And going all the way back to Kandinsky, while he never used wireframes as such, there's a rather big kaleidoscopic effect going on here, explosions of incredibly vivid light and colour, a tunnel vision effect that you could possibly trace back to his work, work which is perhaps amongst the most vivid paintings you're ever likely to find. There's a lot to examine and ponder when it comes to Wes. It's no surprise at all that it's one of the big reference points for people who so wish games to be treated as art, and it actually does possess quite a lot of credentials here, much more than, I don't know, Bioshock Infinite or something. And breaking the game down in that way is kind of a joy, but it's also effective and brilliant to actually play. It's cliched to say it, but Wes is a game that doesn't really feel like anything else at all. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I thought I would be doing the review of the game. Why am I even here otherwise? Well, you did. Sort of, anyway. But now look, 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 look. You've got the shitty wig. I've got the YouTube channel that's all about games. Right? Oh, whatever. Can you do this? Huh? How's about that then? You've moved from one shitty wig to another shitty wig. Um, am I supposed to be impressed here or something? Well, there wasn't really much else I could do. Oh, whatever. Jeez. I really need to find some money already. So, have that honey bath now. No, no, just, just, no. Look, let's carry on. Um, uh, give me another game already. Uh, another musical game that you like, preferably. <gasps> no problem, no problem, no problem. Now, most people don't really know this about me, but I've always been a big fan of rap music. And there was this one teensy weensy little game that came out back when I was a teenager that just. Rapper Rapper, PlayStation 1997. Uh, yeah. I don't even really. Oh, sure you do. Just roll with it. Oh, whatever. Sticking with games that were oh so very hip and cool, here's Parappa La Rapper. Made for the PlayStation in 1996, this was one of the first major music games out there, and one of the most iconic. The uber catchy songs, the weirdness of it all, and of course, the art. At a time when the 32-bit era was either still toying with bad live-action cutscenes or the best 3D models they could make, Parappa went straight into cartoon land. The game's art was created by Wadney Greenblatt, who came up from the world of comic books and was actually pretty well regarded for his work by this point, particularly in Japan, but this would be his most famous commission. 
He stuck comic book art style onto the telly, with flat, instantly memorable figures. It's all just so damn charming, kind of like a mix between East and West. It's no surprise that Puapa would eventually end up with a TV show because, well, he was always destined to be there. As for the game itself, well, you act, and in doing so you turn Puapa into a stronger person so he can win the heart of his crush, Sunny Funny. Every stage takes the form of several lessons. Your teacher raps, button prompts come on the screen, and then you press the corresponding buttons in time to the beat, repeating the phrase. Simple, isn't it? This cute little Simon Says system set a template for musical games going forward, and it made sure that people actually liked playing the game as opposed to just looking at it. And so yeah, the game is very influential, and deservedly so. My only real problem with it is that, well, I absolutely stink at it. I should immediately say that I don't blame the game. It's all perfectly self-explanatory. I'm just awful. I could barely get past the first stage. Maybe it's because I never actually played the game when I was younger, for whatever reason. Maybe it's the reduced frame rate. I'm so used to 50 frames for titles like this that the 25 frames is kind of thrown me off. But keeping in mind that this is a PS1 title, of course, and that was necessary. But for whatever reason, I stick, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. Everyone's got something they're rubbish at. So, you know, maybe you shouldn't listen to me when it comes to this game. However, I did at least want to show it off, and to finally try it out for myself. I mean, hell, I'm doing a video all about musical games, so Parappa the really has to be here, because without it, a lot of the games in the genre, well, they might not have ever existed. As for me, well... I'm just going to have to level up a little bit before I really get to appreciate it. You got to do it again. What? Go. Break it down. Now kick punch, it's all in the mind. If you want to test me, I'm sure you'll find the fins I teach you is sure to be mm -hmm. Ah, that's much better. Oh, peace and quiet at last. <laughs> you saw it. Do you want to go back to normal? Okay. <sighs> Phew. Look, don't worry, don't worry. It's okay. Look, I know you're just being some. Can we not? So, please, just, you know. Can we not? Uh, just stop. I, I am not getting in a honey bath with me anytime soon. Oh, well, fine. I'm just going to sit here and pout, then. Oh, what, and you think I'm just going to let you hold the video hostage? <laughs> well, that's not what's happening. No, so it, you, my friend, are changing it up. Yo, dude, what's the haps? Women don't do drugs and I'm a bugs for the hugs. Know what I'm saying? Um, no. This is jam hot, jam hot, hot jam, stick it in a pram, comb my feathers and I'm a boss that man, psych! Ugh, oh, fuck's sake. Hey, point Dexter, don't be a... Chino? Yo, home, sup? Just... Ugh, oh, I already know what it's gonna be. Just get on with it. Okay, 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 got this, got this, got this. You down with a Mac Daddy? You down with a Marky Mark? You're down with the C to the mother humping C? Then welcome to the game of the decade. Make my video? Make my video. So in the dark days before Puapa La Wappa came around, this is what music games generally looked like. Welcome to the world of Make My Video, a series of games for the Mega CD released in the early 90s by the almighty Digital Pictures, lay of Night Trap, Sewer Shark and the like. I have actually covered one of these before, but alas, it's lost to time. So let's revisit them. Oh, and not just one game either. There are four Make My Video games, and they're all the exact same. You've got a choice between the kiddie gangster rap of Criss Cross, the early 90s butt rock of NXS, the poor man's vanilla ice style of Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, and the only clear choice there is, CNC Music Factory. In each game you simply pick one of three songs, choose who you want to make the video with, edit a video together by randomly clicking buttons during one pass through of the song, watch what you did back, and then get told that your video sucked big elephant dicks. Wash, rinse, repeat, 
That's all there is. But then of course there's also the glorious early 90s stupidity of the whole thing, that glorious FMV production. The Marky Mark one comes straight out of Clarissaville with a mixture of quibbling siblings. Now is it just me or do you think that the brother here looks kinda like a much younger Spoonie? Or maybe Adam Richman? I don't know. It also has surreal scenarios like making a video with a boxer because uh, digital pictures. It's usually picked as the worst one of the four, although it's all kind of interchangeable. I guess that the whole Marky Mark as John Cena's dad thing is more embarrassing than anything else here, really. The NXS one takes you to a bar, with two ladies hogging the pool table and getting quartered by a bunch of total squares. It's your job to pick one of these losers to make a video with, with the implication that if you're good they'll get to hang out with the girls. Now I wouldn't wish any of these chuckle fucks on my worst enemy, so I picked the two other girls who liked Megadeth, because, well, why not? The CNC Music Factory one is obviously the best. All the songs are represented by different clubs, and the plot naturally takes place in a literal music video factory, where you've got to help out the overworked serfs by making a vid for them, saving them from the wrath of an evil Phil Lamar. Yeah, that Phil Lamar, most famous for being Marvin and getting shot in the face. Oh, and he was vamp in Metal Gear Solid as well. The Quiz Cross one, alas, is by far the worst, because, well, there's nothing there. All you get here is a DJ taking calls from kids who request a video. Nothing more. I'm guessing that this is where the budget kind of ran out in this series. The amusing thing about these is that, as far as production goes, aside from the obvious, they're not all that bad. Some of them actually look like money went on them. There's actors who can act, no terrible green screen. It's fine. You know, aside from the one teeny weeny glaring problem, the quality of the video itself, which is basically unwatchable. Yeah, but you can't have it all, can you? Now, the actual editing process itself is... Jeez, it's hard, actually. You get all sorts of silly 90s effects to put all over the video, including the stupidly awesome PM Dawn style wash effect. And as far as the visuals itself go, well you can switch between the original music video itself and two other videos comprised entirely of stock footage and the like. Lots of ancient cartoons, silent movies, cars, clocks, that sort of deal. And you try to cut between these with the song, all the while trying to add stupid effects onto everything. No wonder they all keep telling me that I suck. Although they could probably do it without hitting me with a hammer. But then, well, that's the 90s, kid. It's all about attitude. You don't just suck. You suck. Royally, with a side order of popping and sucking potato chips. Hit the bricks, shit dick, and see if we care. Anyway, there you go. All you ever needed to know about the Make My Video series but were afraid to ask. Say what you will about these games, but they make for the most awesome windows into early 90s trash. <laughs> they really do. I kinda have a soft spot for them. I mean honestly, who could get angry about this? If you do get angry about these games, then you're... Yeah. How's it going, Mac Daddy? Yo, it's about that time to win the whip and the wine. I'ma get mine so you get yours. I wanna see sweat coming at your paws. On the house tip is how I'm swimming this. Strictly hip hop boy, it's sinless. Spreading this out to the entire nation. Black, white, red, brown, feel the vibration. <sighs> well, I'm all alone now. Guess I'm the one who's got to choose the game. And you know what? For me, there's only one possible choice. Okay, let me just tell you about one of my favourite games of all time. Gitaru Man. From straight out of 2001 and for the PlayStation 2, it's, well, it's special. People who love games like Gitaru Man are the most annoying types of people, because they won't tell you why it's so good, they'll just go on about heart and passion and beauty and all of that. I remember learning about the game from Consolvania, where Rap Florence described it using, well, exactly those terms. Then I found it cheap in a store and it turned out he was utterly right. So, to use an old Consylvania phrase, the wank hat is going to be firmly in the head here. Gitaru Man has you play as a dumbass kid called Yu Wan, accompanied by his smartass talking dog, Puma. As usual, there's a crush, and there's an asshole. 
One day Puma teaches Yu Wan how to play guitar, and all of a sudden he gets attacked by various minions. It turns out he's the last hero of Planet Guitaru, a weird parallel universe. And the crush and the asshole are here too, as it happens. Playing it is pretty easy to pick up. You attack by playing scotching ass lead guitar, moving the analog stick along the line and pressing the buttons when prompted. You know that carnival game with the squiggly line? Kinda like that. And then you defend yourself from the enemy's own licks by pushing the face buttons. And it can get fast and furious, I'm telling ya. It might be simple to pick up, but it's tough to master the tracks. But when you do, ugh, it's a good feeling. I've never been brilliant at the game, but pulling off an ultra complex lick is always just super satisfying. It kind of mirrors my own experiences with guitar, actually. And it's interesting to have a musical game that's not based so much on rhythm as it is based on lead playing. Of course, timing's still totally key, but you gotta be ready for anything here. Still, Gitaru Man wouldn't be half the game that it is without all the other things. First off, it has a very awesome, chibi-esque and totally Japanese graphic style. The cutscenes and the in-game graphics are just great. Surely English voice acting is obnoxious as hell, but it's still just so charming looks-wise, so very crazy and expressive. This might not surprise you, but Innis, the team behind this game, would later make Osu Tatake Oendan for the DS. So yeah, kooky looking and odd music games that are also brilliant is kinda their forte. So you've got plenty of good fins riding together, but, well, what's the obvious fin that we haven't really mentioned? Ah yeah, the music itself. Now it's interesting to see what we've had so far on that front. Wes had weapons grade electronica that's pretty nice and atmospheric, Parappa hits you with silly little novelty rap songs that kick you right in the nostalgia, and of course we had a bunch of early 90s hits that most people have forgotten. And then, there's Gitaru Man. One of the greatest video game soundtracks ever. The brilliance of Gitaru Man lies in the awesome emulation of lead guitar, that feeling of just soaring over the music. And this is what you're playing. The soundtrack is varied to hell. You've got flat out rock, a bit of J-pop, some funk, a truly awesome dub skank, some Latin flamenco, and some major degree prog metal. Not a single bad son amongst them. Although for most people who've played the game, there's probably one track that stands out over them all. You know someone's played this game when they mention the legendary theme and they just need to take a quick moment. Whether it's a pretty little acoustic ditty played at a campfire, or the glorious electric version from Gitaru Arena, yeah, that's a pretty awesome guitar song. One of the best, in fact. It's moments like this that just make the game, that end up sticking white right there. Gitaru Man gives you that heroic feeling all the way through. It doesn't stop, and the only bad point of the whole game is when it ends. It's made with so much freaking love, it's hard not to just get swept away. And then guess what? You become one of those hippies I was just talking about, harping on about passion and the like. Yeah, that's me. And guess what? I don't care. Gitaru Man is one of my absolute favourite games on the PS2, and one of my favourites in general. An absolutely unforgettable experience. <sighs> the best game. The best, best, best game. Ah, Gitaru Man. Ah. Ah.
Oh, oh yeah! Thanks for watching my video. If you really, really liked it, maybe you could consider pressing the thumbs up icon that's just to the left here. Or maybe you could subscribe to the channel if you so desire. If you're really, really crazy, maybe you could also follow me on Twitter or even support me on Patreon. Eh, you know, all the usual stuff. Someone's got to pay the bills. As always, wherever you are, whoever you be, have a good one, take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.